Hello again, the moment of truth has arrived in Irish Greyhound Racing. It's the final of the Respond Irish Derby for 1994 on a miserable night here in Shelburne Park. Remember, it's the world's most valuable greyhound race. £50,000 in all on offer, the prize money for the winning connections tonight for just about 30 seconds of action. And in the case of Reggie Roberts, the owner, trainer and breeder of the favourite uh, Old Maid, well, that could uh, well mount to 60,500 because of the fact that there is a Breeders' Prize as well. And the number two dog as well is also in with the possibility of that kind of money. But Old Maid is most definitely the favourite. There's a huge crowd here. There has been a huge crowd here all through this series of Respond Derby race uh, evenings. But for the final, it's extra large. They've come from every part of the country, some by unconventional means. Now, most of us travel down here in our cars. We're most happy to do so. What about these gentlemen here? Paddy Meehan, Noel Carty and Noel's sons, Justin and John, well-known bookmakers, have just made their way back from the Listowel race meeting. Well, I'm sure they came back with a small fortune. Mind you, I'm sure they'll be the first to tell us they went down there with a large one. And they've come here in a drier part of the evening, about two hours ago, on this chopper, and there to take some hard-earned money and perhaps to make of it themselves as well. All part of the scene here on Respond Derby Night. There they are, Paddy Noel, Justin and John. You're nobody if you don't come here in your chopper, are you? So that's uh, part of the setup here in the scene. Let's have a look now at the live races we have for you here this evening in our coverage between 9 and 10. Coming up in a few minutes' time, we have the high bloom final over 5-2-5 five, yards. And then the big one, time for 9.26 the Respond Irish Derby final, over 550 yards and great expectation of a really great race. And then at 9.43, it's the Respond Consolation Derby, again over the same distance. And Moral Standards, winner of the English Derby, of course, is ideally drawn in that race in Trap 1 and uh, will be expected to come through in that one. Now, mention of the Respond Derby itself. Let's take a look at the advanced betting for the big race, which is timed close, as I say, on half past nine. And as you can see, Old May there in at two to one. The outsider in number two, Nimble Piper. And then Michael's Machine, always uh, worth something. 11 to two, Emmett Robert, that's the cork dog. 12 to one, Joyful Tidings, also very hotly fancied. Not all that terribly well drawn, drawn in trap five, but nine to four, the current price. And then Air Flyer, who was second in the English Derby, is uh, the outsider there in uh, trap six. Four to one, the latest price. So time for us then to get down to business on our very first live race here, the High Bloom 525 race. And commentary tonight from Michael Fortune and Descal. And the dogs are just out on the track for the High Bloom 525. And we have a very warm favourite in this race in number one, Ard Column Hilda, who on his last run here was only beaten a short head around the track. So the runners for the High Bloom 525 and the early market prices is that number one, Art Colum Hilda is the warm favourite at even money. Number two is Hakuna Matata, four to one. Same price as number three, Baby Sarah. Number four, Unspoken Message is on four to one. Number five, Gunham Down is on three to one. And number six, Kilpatrick Imp is, I believe, a six to one shot. And the jackpot pool, Baby Sarah, I think, is carrying one ticket, but a warm favourite, Michael is our column Hilda. Yes, as you say, Desi, baby Sarah running for one jackpot punter, I think, in or around £5,000, £4,800 or £5,000 to be won. The pool of around 6000 here tonight. So after the deductions, a nice pot awaiting that one. There we see TJ Myron with number five, Gunham Down. Gunham Down, owned by bookmaker Teddy Hegarty, trained by Colin Graham, and this one, the winner of the Malloy Oaks down in Waterford, and TJ carrying her across. One wonders why he's just carrying her at the moment, but 
Well, he seems to be bringing her away from the scene there and Gunham Down, the daughter of Balliard Hoffman and Affadown Heather. And last week, Gunham Down beat Art Column Hilda a short head here in 29.43, but the betting totally reversed here for tonight. And Art Column Hilda now the even money favourite. Art Column Hilda running in the red jacket. But Gunham Down there with a real chance, running from five, a fast breaker, and well capable of doing a good run. Now with the colours out there in the middle, a bit difficult to recognise anything at the moment. I think that's unspoken message. Number four, the daughter of Little Spot and Circular Airport, owned by Frank Feehan from Clara in Offaly. An unspoken message came with a, a real late run last week to get up to win very, very close to the line, winning by a head. And I think that's our unspoken, this white and black bitch. And she goes out there towards the traps, and now the covers will be coming off shortly, and we'll get a fair idea of exactly what they are. With the favourite here, Art Column Hilda from Trap One, a very interesting runner. She has been doing all her running in England. This daughter of Druids, John Owen, seventh Dynamic, um, owned by Bridget Byrne from Kingston and Surrey, and trained by her husband, Patsy. And of course, Art Column Hilda, based here at the moment with Pat Fitzgerald out in Scarries. Art Column Hilda, fast breaker, a winner of a lot of money across the water, a winner of a lot of races. She breaks fast and she runs on like a train, and that's a lethal combination in any greyhound. She was in a lot of trouble at the first bend last week and came home like a train as we see the dogs now getting ready to go into traps and there we see number two Hakuna Matata this daughter of Airmount Grand and Denver Mini owned by Karen Herr from Kilkenny and trained by Caro O'Dwyer Hakuna Matata great pitch last year ran very well here in the Derby ran well in the Oaks before that and Hakuna Matata showed a return to form last week staying on very strongly on that occasion when third behind Gunham Down in 29.43 have a look at the latest betting now. And further support for the favourite, uh, put in a short price. That has been taken, and it's five to four on. Number one, Art Column Hilda. Number five, Gunham Down. Not, uh, we just got the better of Art Column the last time. He's on five to two. Number two, Hakuna Matata is on four to one. Number four, Unspoken Message Fives. Baby Sarah is drifted out, and so is number six, Kilpatrick Imp. But the favourite, Art Column Hilda from Trap One, and Gunham Down, who beat it narrowly last time they met, is running from five. They're coming to the traps, and Art Column Hilda has broken away smartly, but chased up to the bend on the outside by Baby Serda, and then um, Makuna Matata on the inside, but racing on down the far side, and Gunham Down went right on at the first turn, but it's Art Column Hilda who's out in front by a couple of lengths, trying hard is Hakuna Matata on the inside of Baby Serda. And then unspoken message, but the gamble's been landed, I think. Art Cullum Hilda being chased home now by, in second place, Hakuna Matata. But Art Cullum Hilda wins it from in second place, Hakuna Matata, with Baby Sarah in third place. And Gunham Downs' chances went at the first bend. But the very warm favourite, Art Cullum Hilda, broke smartly enough to make the first turn, and that proved very significant. Yes, well, the race was all over from Trap. She was very unlucky here last week in her heat. And while the, the expected rematch with herself and Gunham Down, well, that was, well, thrown out the window at the first corner as number five got a terrible fall, Gunham Down. But now from break, it's number one, Art Column Hilda, the daughter of Druid's Jono, out fast. Number three, Baby Sarah, giving the one jackpot punter and this one a, a, a rare thrill going to the first corner in second place. Hakuna Matata in third and now out of the picture. You see dogs across the track and there goes um, Gunham Down taking a horrible fall there in the opening corner. But she got up and finished behind the field and looked fine going in. But it's number one in front, Art Column Hilda, and she's gone now by a few lengths from Baby Sarah. Hakuna Matata challenging for second place and back and forth is unspoken message but this one in front she's won sprint races across the water and she's won 600 meters races she's a top class bitch does it every end of the race front and at the finish and there she is in front of Kuna Matata trying hard moving into second place ahead of baby Sarah incidentally another one which has returned from England and in fourth place unspoken message and then way back is Kilpatrick Imp which was also in trouble on the corner but coming for home, there's only one winner here, Art Column Hilda, owned by Bridget Byrne, trained by her husband Patsy, and of course the headman, Pa Fitzgerald. What an omen it is for Air Flyer coming up in the final for the same team. And returned odds on Art Column Hilda. Five to four on the evens taken by the very big crowd here who plunged into this one. Second was Hakuna Matata at five to one, and third was Baby Sarah at ten to one, and the time in the conditions, a very good 29.42. Absolutely. Conditions quite dreadful tonight. A lot of rain about, and that first bend has been <coughs> pretty treacherous, as we've seen there. Now, turning our attention to the big race tonight, the Respond Irish Derby final, I've PJ McCarthy with me here. His dog is in trap four, Emmett Robert. Emmett and Robert, yes. the great story, PJ, is that this is your first time to own a dog. First, first dog, yes. 
Um, you have the Midas touch. Well, yeah, I suppose <laughs> it's just good fortune. Um, I've had an interesting dog for years and was a member of the coursing club down in Clannacilty, but um, it's just fortunate we happened to be lucky in the first purchase. How did you acquire the dog? Uh, we bought him from uh, Dan Joe Collins, who's in New Sistown, a uh, well-known breeder and um, a farmer friend of mine, Dan Murphy, reared the uh, two pups we bought and Dan kept one and I had the other. Well, you've had a fantastic run of success oh, because you've won a lot of good races. Good races since uh, February. We are done in Tralee. We won a stake in Tralee. And then we won a, an invitation race in Tralee, a £1,000 race. And we won the McCrew Motor Stakes in Cork and the Constellation Champion Stakes. A word about the conditions tonight, PJ, because it's been raining fairly incessantly. Very I was bad. just mentioning the first heavy. bend. We saw a bit of a pile up there. Yes, oh, absolutely. Um, we encountered that uh, sort of condition down in Tralee several times early on in the year, so that doesn't bother us very much. What about your draw? Draw is very bad. Um, six is our box. Uh, we never last from six. Um, five is, would be better, but four isn't so good. Yeah, so much is going to depend upon the fast break tonight because many people are saying to me, the dog that's in front will go all the way. Oh, yes, oh, that, there's no doubt about that, I think. Um, well, the bitch on the inside has the draw and she's the favourite, I suppose. Worthy favourite. She's an amazing bitch. She's had this she great is. run of she luck is. as well, mind you. Oh, Being yes. in there in trap one the whole time. Each night, trap one, and each night a winner. And what about trap six? Not a bad place to be either. Oh, Air Flyer. trap six is good. Uh, but in the quarter final, we beat Air Flyer. Uh, we were in five and he was in six. So You've well. got quality either side of you as well. Yes, oh, Michael's machine is a great dog in the uh, trap tree. Um, the joyful tidings. The yes, oh, a joyful dog. Tidings, of course, yeah. Oh, it's up against it. Are you worried about maybe bunching there in the front uh, and well, the whole thing turning into a bit of a lottery, really? May, may do. Um, but you know, I just take it as it comes, I suppose. And I'm sure you take the 50,000 as well. I will. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. That's PJ McCarthy from Skibbereen. Robert Emmett, or Emmett Robert, I should say, to get it absolutely right, is his dog in Trap, trap 4. I well, we wish him well and wish all the owners and trainers well in the final, which is due off at 9.26, so around about half past nine or thereabouts. We've had some racing here already. We're going to look back at the very first race on the card, which was over hurdles. The bell sounds for the dawn high and low hurdle. One is West Point Star, 12 to 1. Number two, Hartstown Lad, the 6 to 4 joint favourite. Three, Pearly Spencer, 9 to 1. Four, Peters Well make the joint favourite. Five is Slippy Bella, 14 to 1, and six is Green to go on the outside and in the centre, moving up to jump the first. Peterswell Mick, the joint favourite, showing in front. In second place is Green to go, and they're a couple of lengths cleared of Slippy Bella, but down now to the second and out in front is Peters well make about three in front green to go still hanging in there in second there's some way clear of Hartstown lad has moved into third but as they run towards the home turn it is Peters well make who's out clear being chased by green to go running on his Hartstown lad but up towards the finish it is Peters well make all the way chased home by green to go who's being pressed for the second by Hartstown lad who ran on well but it was a trap to line victory for Peters will make And the early pace of Peters well Mick, the decisive factor in this race. Coming away well from Chelsea with Green to go on the outside, Hartstown lad on the inside, but a great first jump there from Peters well Mick. Puts him clear into the first corner. This fellow has a lot of early pace on the flat and now showing the same talent here over hurdles. It's just his second hurdle race, but already gone, what, three lengths clear off the second bend from Green to go in second. He's gone well clear of the favourite Hartstown lad in third, but the second hurdle just flicks through it there. Peters Wellmeek owned by Jim McCann and his wife, Jim, the prominent track bookmaker, and Peters Wellmeek is son of Curry Hills Gara and Turbo, Turbo Rose, jumping well, now with a lead of four lengths over Green to go at the third bend. Well back then in third place is Hartstown lad with Pearly Spencer putting in a run, but the 300 pound prize well settled at this stage as Peters well make coming off the last bend still galloping on strongly this fellow with a four length lead off the last bend green to go on second he normally runs wide up the straight and there he is heading again out on his wide path over the last and coming to the line and as Peters well make the winner there from in second place was green to go and in third Hartstown lad and the SP winner Peters well make two to one second green to go three to one and third Hartstown lad six to four favorite the time was 29.90.
great performance there by the winner, wasn't it? And I can tell you the connections have it taped, and I'm sure they're going to play that race over again and again. But now looking ahead to the Respond Irish Derby final, here's a further show of betting now and an update, and we'll see how the market is moving. Old Maid now 7 to 4, Joyful Tidings 5 to 2, very firmly the two favourites, and Michael's Machine is now at 5 to 1. Well, of course, this time last week we were enjoying the semi-finals, the two semi-finals of the Derby. And it's worth bearing in mind that when they raced last week, they were racing for the third time in eight days. Very tough going as well. And uh, it's no harm to look back now on the current form. And the thing about the two semi-finals really is that the favourites prevailed and in style. As the dogs are boxed now, and there's a look at the market. Number one, Old Maid is seven to four, joint favorite with Air Flyer, one and six dominating the market. Moral Standards in a point from fives to fours. It's eight to one, Nimble Piper, 20 to one each of two, I'm Dizzy, and Long Valley Manor. Well, the huge crowd are packed in now to get positions here as the hare comes round the bend to the traps for the first of the Respond Irish Derby semi-finals. Away they go, and it's from six, Air Flyer. Old Maid going up equally on the inside, and Old Maid with the inside bird might just shade it round the turn, and as they make into the second bend, it's Old Maid in front of Air Flyer, in third is Nimble Pipe, but there's a break then to I'm Dizzy, and some way behind is Moral Standers, but down the back, it's Old Maid showing three in front, battling away for the second place on the inside is Nimble Piper, but back up on the outside as they raced round the home turn. It's still Old Maid showing the way. Air Flyer trying hard in second, but Old Maid, Air Flyer and Nimble Piper, they're the three to go into the final of the Respond Derby a week from tonight. Old Maid showing good speed, matched by Air Flyer, but making the first turn, and after that, the best of her way home. Old Maid, the winner then of the first semi-final, making almost all. Yes, and there you see Reggie Roberts walking away with a bitch, and no wonder he's happy. Watch this for a performance. Air Flyer comes away quite well, not with his electric start, but he's away well enough, no excuses. But meanwhile, on the inside, Old Maid is out very well too. Air Flyer, they're running neck and neck to the corner, but from her position now, she has to get around. Now watch the back of the field, Moral Standard. He's pushed wide there is number three, I'm Dizzy, runs wide. Number four, Long Valley Manor is pushed out onto Moral Standards, and he's nearly out of the derby already. Down the back, and it's Old Maid, what, two and a half in front. Air Flyer second, now Nimble. Piper putting in that normal run down the back straight, going up to challenge for second place now going into the third bend. Old Maid in front now we have Nimble Piper just showing second ahead of Air Flyer and watch at the back Marl Standers trying to get through here on the inside he's in fifth place at this stage but he checks for no reason, he checks on his own there on the third bend and this is where he loses his place in the final of the derby. But meanwhile out front it's Old Maid in front, in second place Air Flyer Nimble Piper, which has lost his place on the third bend also, back in third place, and then we have I'm Dizzy in fourth, but up the straight, and well, there's no question what's winning this one. This is a fine performance from Old Maid. She's nearly going to be favoured for the derby now. She comes towards the line. She's still unbeaten. Old Maid easily winning the semi-final. Air Flyer running on strongly in second, and Nimble Piper strongly also in third, and then a final flourish there, and you can only see it in a bit of a blur as moral standards trying to get through, but he fails to do the double, so yet no greyhound has ever won both the English and Irish Greyhound Derby. Sounds, and the runners then for the second semi-final. One is Michael's Machine, the two-to-one favourite. Two is Belly Groovy. Three, Emmett Robert. Four, Velvet Rocket. Five is Joyful Tidings, the second favourite. And six, Rocky on the outside. Although the outsider of the party, Michael gives him a squeak of getting into the final. Away they come, and it's a very level break, and Velvet Rocket just beginning to inch up with Joyful Tidings on the outside, and Michael's Machine tracks them on the inside of Emmett Robert, and they've run off the turn there now, and down the far side, Velvet Rocket shows in front, Joyful Tidings is second, Michael's Machine trying a big run, and there goes Joyful Tidings up between them to split. On the inside is Michael's Machine making ground the outside, Velvet Rocket, and these three are a few lengths clear, but it's Joyful Tidings off the home turn and racing up towards the finish. Michael's Machine is trying hard. It's a great battle for third and I think Emmett Rocket's going to be in the final but certainly in is Joyful Tidings and Michael's Machine a big run there from Joyful Tidings Michael's Machine and I think Emmett Rocket just snatched the third place in what must have been a tingling moment for connections as the big uh, white dog just got up for third but no doubt about the winner Yes, no doubt about the winner. A great race. We thought it would be a good race, and it was. Look at number four and five. There's a two on the early pacers. Number four is Velvet Rocket. Number five, Joyful Tidings, and they run neck and neck to the corner. Rocky got a terrible break from six, but it's number four, Velvet Rocket, in front. He moves a bit wide, pushes Joyful Tidings out here, and now he ran some race because he lost valuable ground there. That left Michael's machine with a glorious run up the inside. But into the back, it's Velvet Rocket in front, and here's where 
joyful tidings really showed his class. He comes up to challenge um, Velvet Rocket at this stage. Goes up his inside as Velvet Rocket running wide. Velvet Rocket really showing tiredness now after the quick runs. Look at number three putting in the run, Emmett Robert. He's closed off here, has to check back. There's Rocky, has to check it as well it was a bit of a concertina effect on that and Bally Grooby trying to get into it but up front is Joyful Tidings clear now number one Michael's Machine coming through in second and Velvet Rocket is really paddling ground at this stage he's in trouble losing ground all the way home and here comes the White Dog Emmett Robert with a huge run but in front it's all over as Joyful Tidings the very impressive winner from in second place Michael's Machine and no doubt about it Emmett Robert up for third and he's through to the final and joyful tidings, of course, going from trap five to victory there and in trap five again tonight. A lot of people have stayed with uh, this particular dog all through the series. And mind you, Old Maid started out at about 100 to one, his favourite tonight so far. Let's see the latest betting. And there we have Old Maid now at six to four and joyful tidings in trap five, five to two and not much movement elsewhere as we saw a little earlier. So Old Maid and Joyful Tidings, very much the money riding on those two. The bitch Old Maid hoping to become just the seventh bitch ever to win the Respond Irish Derby. Well, the dogs are coming out onto the track now. It's been a great ovation as they came out. And let's go back and join our commentary team once again. Yes, well, the betting market here is a hive of activity. And just minutes ago, bookmaker Teddy Hegarty was nearly landed in the middle of the field as he was laying the number one old maid. Is turning into a, quite a sensational gamble here in the final of the Respond Irish Derby. Nine to four on offer as we came in this evening. She has been hammered down to six to four. And Hegarty is about the only one holding her still at six to four with five to four on most boards. Joyful Tidings, incidentally, still holding his place at five to two. Everything else on the drift. And there's plenty of money for everything else, let it be said. But it's all about Old Maid in the market. She's the unbeaten finalist. She's bidding to become the first greyhound to remain unbeaten in the derby since Manorville Magic in 89. And she's also bidding to become only the seventh pitch ever to win this great classic. And the dogs on parade. The rain seems to be abating and the crowd are beginning to stretch around the track. A huge crowd here again and very unpleasant with the rain falling earlier on but well now we're coming to the big moment it's getting very close now for the derby there we see a shot of the massive crowd here in Shelburne Park as we said here last week the crowds during this year's derby have really been quite superb and huge crowds every night and proves well if it was needed proving that the greyhound racing when the class is there it retains a great appeal the final touch is being put to the bend. A lot of water lying on the inside of the track. An awful lot of rain fell earlier on the night and a lot of water lying around various places. As we see stewards going around seemingly trying to get tests off the greyhounds at the moment. And there we see the runners down at the bottom bend and we saw Emmett Robert there. The final attention has been passed. There we see on the opening bend the sand well, the water lying on it still and sand being raked. Trying to remove some of the loose water lying on the bend. And there, Desi, another show of betting. Well, Old Maid has been very significantly backed into 6-4, to four, but you can see the support now for Joyful Tidings, who's come into 2-1. to one. So the... Uh, 1994 Respond Irish Greyhound Derby certainly turning into a two-dog affair in the betting market and both have been strongly supported with Nimble Piper even at 50 to 1 coming in 10 points to 40 to 1 so the complete betting one old maid is the 6 to 4 favourite a strong second favourite number 5 Joyful Tidings into 2 to 1 it's 4 to 1 air flyer running from 6 number 3 Michael's Machine has his supporters in a point from 11 to 2 to 5 to 2 Emmett Robert in two points from 12s to 10s, and even Nimble Piper from 50s to 40s, all been backed in what looks to be a very healthy market for the final. Yes, and there we see her, the placid, very calm bitch, this old maid. As Reggie Robert says, she falls asleep in the car coming to the racing, but she certainly doesn't fall asleep on the track. This daughter of moral support and Olin Rose, owned by Reggie Roberts from Athangadon County Kildare, bred and trained by Reggie. And old maid, well, it took her quite a while to get going to win her opening races, but when she got going, she couldn't stop. She's run 16, she has won eight. She has won seven of her last eight races, including getting to the Derby final unbeaten. Her last defeat was in the Malloy Munster Oaks at Waterford, where she was beaten by Gunham Down, which you saw 
knocked over at the corner in the preceding race. Olan made 100 to 1 on boards before the off of this classic. She's breaking fast, she's staying well, she's a superb bitch. I was down in her kennel yesterday, she looks in marvellous condition, and well, she'll take some beating. And there we see number two, Nimble Piper, you could say the next door neighbour to Old Maid. Just down the road from her, this son of Tico and Fair Damsel, owned and bred by Mary Heffernan and Willie Heffernan from Sillot and Kildare, trained in Rathangan by Martin Brahan. Now, Nimble Piper is a nervous type of dog, very strange going, and cramps coming home in his races, and it's suspected that it's probably that type of nervous energy which is forcing him to cramp, because he has stayed on occasions in his races. This dog was 250 to 1 before the derby. He's still what you saw there, 50 and 40 to 1 in the betting, but he's a dog with astonishing pace down the back straight. And the way the race is drawn, he could very easily be in second place down the back and motoring. But it's when he comes off the last corner that Nimble Piper runs into some problems when he cramps. Some night, however, he's not going to cramp. He has run 12, he has won 2, but he's better than those mere statistics might suggest. And here we see number three, Michael's Machine, being led by his trainer, Paddy O'Connor. Paddy's been through it all before, second in the derby here with another trail. Well, Michael's Machine is without question the fastest dog in the derby. A son of Saharn Bio and Sleepy Midget, owned by Paddy's brother, Jimmy, who's based in Beckenham in Kent, and bred by Michael Hanrahan in Mullinahone in County Tipperary. Trained by Paddy O'Connor, Michael's Machine really burst on the scene last year when winning the Leinster champion Puppy Stick at Enniscorthy in a sensational 28-92. Went across to England for the winter and was a winter favourite for the Derby, but never really got going in England. Came back here, reached the final of the Laurels, reached the final of the Champion Stakes. He's the fastest dog in the Derby in 30-14. He has done 30-04. He can fly to a bend, he can stay, he can do everything. And when he's in the mood, he's one hell of a greyhound. That's number three, Michael's Machine, who has won 13 of his 28 races. On to number four, Emmett Robert. The dog I'd fancy if he was in six, he's not, he's in four. He's owned by Pat, PJ McCarthy from Clonakilty in Cork, works down in Skibbereen and, well, PJ, you've seen him interviewed already in the programme. Bred by Dan Joe Collins in Eustacetown, that great bitch Long Valley lady out or by Merlin Slippy. Trained by Christian Lima Callahan in McCroom in County Cork. Emmett Robert, an absolute Thoroughly consistent greyhound. He's won 15 of his 24 races, including the Allwood Furniture Stake at Tralee, the McCroom Motor Stake at Cork, the Hospital Charity Race at Tralee, and the Consolation Champion Stake here at Shelburne Park. He's a really strong greyhound. Somebody said there about the conditions where they affect him. They certainly won't affect this fellow. He's a very strong dog, gallops relentlessly and can break, but is badly drawn in four. However, if he gets a run, he's real value at the 10 and 12 to 1. So we come to the Kerry dog, Joyful Tidings, owned by Mick Carmody from Tarbert. Bred by Donal O'Connor in Kilsheelan in Cl County Tipperary and trained in Ardfer and Kilmoyley Ardfert by Donny O'Regan. Joyful Tidings, the son of Whisper Wishes in Newman's Mall. A really, really good greyhound. He's won the last four rounds of the derby, beaten in the opening qualifying round by Michael's machine, but well, he's left that well behind him since. He's won 11 of his 18 races, outstanding early pace, and really, when he hits the first bend, he really quickens around those opening corners and down the back straight. A dog of brilliant pace, winner of the Lee Strand Charity 550 at Tralee, and then just beaten in the final of the Paddy Byrne Memorial at Tralee. And that race is sponsored by Patsy Byrne, who just happens to be the trainer of the dog you're looking at now, number six, Air Flyer. The man holding him, Patsy's head man, the renowned Pa Fitzgerald from Tralee. Air Flyer, the son of Ardfert Sean and Slaneyside Glory, jointly owned by Helen Halbert from Prestwick in Scotland and Helen Roach from Castle Connell in County Limerick. Bred by Eugene Price in Rathangan, the third dog from that Kildare town to be in this derby final. Trained, as I say, by Pat Fitzgerald, who's been based here in Skerries with Desi Gilbert for the last few months. Well, Air Flyer, first known as Hopping Harry, came on the scene when winning the Midsummer on race stake at Newbridge last year in 2890. Was sold, renamed Air Flyer, won the Middle Eastern Puppy Championship and the Sporting Life Juvenile Championship at Wimbledon. Became joint favourite with Michael's Machine for the English Derby. <coughs> finished runner-up to moral standards in the English Derby final at Wimbledon, then was sent over to Ireland to be prepared for his big campaign here, won the Toll International at Dundalk and is now in the Derby final. A dog with brilliant early pace, drawn to perfection in trap six, stays strongly. He has won 18 of his 29 races. Desi, I think you'll be calling him fairly early on, number six, Air Flyer. And a last look at the market for the £50,000 1994 Respond Irish Greyhound Derby is that Old Maid has re-established herself as the very strong favourite here uh, at 6-4. Second favourite, Joyful Tidings at 5-2. to two. 
It's 9 to 2, Michael's Machine and Gareflower. 10 to 1, Emmett Robert, and 40 to 1, Nimble Piper. And the crowd getting very impatient. There are so many people who are not going to see this derby. The stands are packed, the bell sounds. One, Old Maid the favourite. Two is Nimble Piper. Three, Michael's Machine. Four, Emmett Robert. Five, Joyful Tidings. Six, the outside is Air Flyer. The hare is on the way round of the traps. And listen for the derby roar when they hit the, tr hit the lid. And away they go, and Old Maid missed it, and bombing away was Michael's machine, air flyer right up, Joyful Tidings in between them, might just shade it, and Joyful Tidings has hit the front, they're racing down the second bend, and racing down the far side, Joyful Tidings a couple of lengths clear, Michael's machine making ground as Emmett Robert, moving into third place, and racing now towards the home turn, Joyful Tidings is out in front, in second place, Michael's machine, Emmett Robert trying hard, but Joyful Tidings is going to win the respond derby. Joyful Tidings wins it in good style from Michael's Machine, Emmett Robert, and they're uh, followed in by a disappointing favourite, Old Maid. Missed the break. What a night not to come out in front, but it was a great run to the first turn, and Joyful Tidings emerged from the first turn in front and stayed there to win the derby. Yes, and there you see trainer Donny O'Regan first onto the track to grab the winner joyful tidings and to congratulate him and this son of whisper wishes and human smile well whisper wishes hadn't bred a derby winner here and he died recently well how ironic that he gets his first derby winner well just about a month or so after he had died and joyful tidings owned by mike carmody a publican and farmer down in tarbert well i'll tell you one thing there'll be some drinking down in that pub over the next few days there you see the break number one old made the favorite totally missed it as did nimble piper but it's number three michael's machine in the middle joyful tidings on the outside air flyer watch the determination of joyful tidings there he is in between them really runs that bend well pushes air flyer out of the way on the corner michael's machine gets a nice run along the inside meanwhile at the back it's nimble piper and old made hammering each other but into the back straight and joyful tidings away and gone he's never going to be beaten at this stage in second place michael's machine a battle for third with air flyer now being challenged by emmett robert on the outside but it's joyful tidings three lengths in front and going for home stretching on from number three michael's machine in second in third emmett robert and in fourth is air flyer followed by nimble piper not the rear old maid but coming around the last corner joyful tidings in front a lead of what three lengths in front from number three michael's machine in second emmett robert in third and off the last bend there's no way he's going to be stopped now and what a reception he's getting as joyful tidings comes to the line the winner from michael's machine in second emmett robert is in third and he crosses the line the winner of the 1994 respond irish derby is joyful tidings and a very strong second favourite, Joyful Tidings, had been widely tipped throughout the preliminaries and all the way through and went off the second favourite at 5-2. to two. Second was Michael's Machine, 9-2, to two, and third, Emmett Robert, 10-1, to one, and the time was 30-35, and tremendous scenes down here on the track, just uh, beyond the winning post, as the winner is being led back, and there's the very happy party. Yes, there you see Donny O'Regan, half Kerry is here. There was a train from Kerry tonight that called it the ghost train because it returns to Kerry at 12 o'clock midnight. It's due to get into Tralee at 3.35 in the morning. I think after this result, I don't think it'll get in before, well, certainly before 8 o'clock, as we see Donny O'Regan and Imelda Grau, the photographer, giving Donny instructions where to go and where he's to go for the photograph. And there she is directing operations at the stage of Imelda. But Donny, well, he's just happy. He's trained a derby winner. This dog has travelled 2,210 miles during the derby, coming up and down from Kilmoyley in Kerry, just outside Ardfert. Well, it's all been worthwhile, and what a game, game Greyhound, with brilliant pace around those opening bends. This fellow is, and he really had to do it there because he was squeezed for room into the corner. As you see, Donny O'Regan reckoned as one of the really hot men on the southern scene. A hard man to beat in a final, they always say. Well, he's proved it here. Now, as we watch them there getting in for the further presentation, there we see the minister, Brian O'Shea, Frank Hayes there from the Kerry Group. And Michael Hanrahan there of Kerry Group in the behind. And getting all ready for the presentation of this Respond Irish Greyhound Derby 1994. And you're seeing a really great greyhound in joyful tidings. He has now run 19 races. He has won 12 of them, been second twice, third on four occasions, and out of the first three, just once. I saw him winning the Lee Strand Charity 
550 down in Trilly early in the year. He looked a superb dog then, and well, he still is a superb greyhound. He's going to on to much better things, this fellow. And he's missing one toe. He's just he was sold for five thousand five hundred pounds after winning the Lee Strand Charity 550 in Tralee. The deal fell through. I wonder is the man who was going to buy him? Is he here or watching in tonight? Because this dog has now won fifty thousand pounds in winning this race, and it just shows you that four toes or five toes, well, they can do it. And joyful tidings has certainly done it. And that's where we're going to take a short break. We'll be back taking another look back at that race, meeting the winning connections as well. That's after this break. Joyful Tidings has just won the Respond Irish Derby for 1994 and they're still celebrating down there. Why not? Lots and lots of money went on the dog in trap five and she won most emphatically. And uh, right here, I've got the very, very happy and jubilant owner. And that is, of course, Michael Carmody. Ah, for right, I'm the presenter, but I can't get nobody to oh, get the cup. <laughs> my goodness, we've got it all wrong in that case. Yeah. It was a great race. It was a very good race, and we're delighted that the trophy's going back to Kerry. So you're just waiting for somebody to present the cup I'm to? Waiting for somebody to present the well, are they still celebrating down there, I wonder? Let's have a little look again and see if we can see some more celebrating people down there. They are. They're still in the midst of that group. They're the winning connections. People watching these pictures, I'm sure, all over the country, having enjoyed a great race. One man I'd like to mention is in the Matter Hospital. It's Richard Liffey of Shinrona County Offaly. Wished very well. A great doggy man, I believe. And uh, sorry he's not here tonight. Hope you made a bit of money on that. We've got the trainer at last. Right. Tony Regan. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Thank Marvellous you. success. Yeah, he ran well. Yeah. Got a great break as well. Yeah, fairly good, yeah. I think he was about second or third out. He was indeed. Air yeah, Flyer probably yeah. took a great start there. But he got a good run around the bend, you know. The important thing, I suppose, is that the dog wasn't touched as she was breaking through at that stage. Yeah, he got a good run and he seemed to rail on the bend, but he was good. Yeah. It's a good dog. Would you like to take a look at the race again? I would, yeah. Well, let's see if we can line it up yeah. here. You can watch the monitor here yeah. and you can give us your views and how it went. Yeah, here it goes again. Yeah, he was second there now. Yeah, he just cut in here. He was lucky, treated and tipping. Yeah. I knew he had won there then. Yeah. I was worried about Michael's machine. He was second there. I thought Michael's machine might catch him coming home. Fabulous victory. What was the time? Uh, just see it coming yeah. Up yeah, it ran well. Great victory. Wonderful, wonderful yeah. win. Yeah. You're, pleased, you're, you're pleased with that. Hang on a yeah. second, we're not letting you go that fast. You're uh, pleased with the win? Yeah, it delighted to win the derby, very happy to win the derby. There was a story that the dog was for sale at one stage and the sale fell through yeah, because the dog was missing a toe. Yeah, he was sold for five and a half thousand and the sale fell through, which was for our luck. We wouldn't be here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, a great series because you were unbeaten for a long way back. Yeah, he, he had four wins, and I, I'm always worried about a dog with a lot of wins going into final. They have to make a mistake some night. Well, it's interesting, the favourite there, Old Maid, was eclipsed in the race tonight. Yes, well, you can keep winning all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, you have a presentation to make. I have a presentation. And already, as I say, Tarbert have been very <laughs> in the Rosa Tralee, yeah. and now... Yeah, well, where is Michael Carmody do here? And, you know, Michael you, you is can somewhere. See, you can see big <laughs> celebrations in Tarbert for the next part. They won't be able to take it all. Yeah. We're delighted from the Kerry Group to be able to present. Thanks very much. And thank you for everything. Well thank done you. indeed. You're thank planning you. to go home tonight, I believe? Yeah, we must go back to Kerry Co-op tonight or they'll kill us. <laughs> <laughs> so back by train and you'll arrive around midnight or whenever? Uh, well, we travel by car. We'll be home some more anyway. Great stuff. <laughs> Thanks enjoy, very much. Enjoy your victory. Okay, well done. Thank you very much. OK, so... The uh, connections there, the trainer, Donny O'Regan, in jubilant form, why wouldn't he be? And that was a superb win. Well, we're going to roll the clock back now a little further to one of the earlier races we had here at Shelburne Park tonight. It was the second race on the card, and uh, let's see how that one went. The bell sounds for the Kerry Agribusiness 360. One is Shore Lord, two is Hymanstown Pal, three, Londis Tiger, four, Ginger King, five, Handsome Duke, the warm favourite, 
and six is Marshall Sunset. The hare just making its way across towards the traps on the far side, and away they go in a flyer for sure. Lord on the inside of Londis Tiger, moving up on the inside is Hyman's Town Pal, and the favourite is the back marker, Handsome Duke, and a great battle on at the home turn. Sure Lord just the leader from Londis Tiger, racing now towards up towards the finish, and it's Sure Lord in the lead, coming home strongly. Londis Tiger, but Sure Lord again breaking smartly, making the first two bends and holding on strongly to win at the end. So number one, Sure Lord, the winner of the Kelly Agri Business 360. Yes, and the favourite number five there getting a very, very bad break, Handsome Duke. And meanwhile, it's number one, Sure Lord in front from number three, Londis Tiger second. Londis just appears to be getting the better of matters going to the bend, but here they just, Londis seemed to check slightly first and number one, Sure Lord pushed him slightly out of the way as number four, Ginger King comes up on the outside. But it's number one, Sure Lord on the bend. In front for number three, Londis Tiger in second. Number two, Hyman's Town Pal getting a run through. A big wide gap there in the inside to burst through. The favourite running on from the rear, but he had lost all his chances at the start. But coming to the line, it's Sure Lord in front, won by Elizabeth Flood from Golden. Winning there from number three, Londis Tiger on the line with number two, Hyman's Town Pal in third. The result of the Kerry Agri Business 360. First, Sure Lord, five to one. Second, Londis Tiger, five to one. And third, Hyman's Town Pal. 10 to 1, the time 1969. One more live race still to go, very shortly, but it'll respond. Consolation Derby, the dogs that didn't quite get through for the final here tonight. But before that, I'd like you to meet the Minister for Food and Horticulture, Mr. Brian O'Shea. A great night here, great oh. night of festivities. A uh, terrific night, must be the biggest crowd of all times. Wonderful race, marvellous winner, and really demonstrates the potential of this great sport. Something that I'm obviously very interested in and pursuing very strongly at the moment. Uh, we're into providing extra funding for the industry to bring up uh, amenities uh, to make the whole sport more consumer friendly and I believe there's excellent potential here in terms of the whole business of attracting back larger attendances and job creation on foot of that. That going all the way through the industry right through from the breeder to those who are involved at that administrative level or in the tracks. So it's a wonderful occasion tonight and an occasion that underlines the potential as I said earlier. Now will the government back all of that up with hard cash? Uh, the government uh, will back it up, but obviously in the context of using taxpayers' money, we've got to have the right plans, uh, we've got to tackle problems the right way, but certainly the government won't be found wanting in that context when the plans that the board is very vigorously working at at the moment uh, are available and the process of providing that funding is already in hand. Do you see it as a family-based sport, like an occasion for all the family to come out and have a bit of fun? Uh, I do indeed. My 11-year-old son is here with me tonight and he enjoys it very well. And I think it's, it's a good sport for children. My son certainly tunes into the excitement and the excitement of the young people there when the final took place and after the final, I think, underlines that. And it's in the context of providing amenities uh, for families. Indeed, in the United States, in one track that I visited, for instance, the management there were looking at the whole idea of providing a creche uh, so that the younger members of the family who wouldn't have an interest would be provided for. Would there be, would there be betting f facilities in the creche as well? Well, the, <laughs> the laws of the land must be observed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. It's been a great month for Bordenagon because you've had big, huge crowds, but the reality is, come Monday, you're back to the smaller crowds again, unfortunately. Well, there is that, but I believe that in general there is a movement forward. A large problem that we have is that the British market in terms of purchasing dogs is not buoyant at the moment and most of our dogs go there. The very good quality dogs still sell but the problem is in disposing of the medium standard greyhounds. But I believe there's, there's a buzz in the industry and the board is very close now to uh, announcing part of its plans uh, for a number of tracks around the country. That process will be ongoing. And I believe over the next couple of years we're going to see a great revival in greyhound racing. Can we sustain, Minister, the number of tracks that we have? Because surely the reality is that some will fall by the wayside. Well, there is always that danger. Uh, but, but I believe that in terms of pro providing facilities, we've got to cut the claw to the measure of the particular track. Uh, in some tracks, for instance, uh, as we have here in Shelburne, the flagship stadium, the business of having sit-down facilities uh, is one uh, that's viable because you've got that big population behind you. Uh, let's say in other tracks, fast food may be the answer. 
but I think on the, in the general context of amenities, uh, we've got to suit the amenities to the particular circumstances. And I certainly go forward in the context that we'll keep all tracks going and that we'll improve the situation for tracks. Minister, thank you very much indeed. Thank and you, uh, good of you to join us once again and give us your views on yeah. the way Greyhound racing is going in this country. Well, as I told you, we've one live race still to go. That's the Consolation final. And this is where Moral Standards, who has drawn brilliantly in trap one from his point of view, might just add on another fine victory. But there are some very good dogs in this last live race we're going to show you. Let's go and see them on parade now. Yes, a really interesting lineup for this Respond Consolation derby. and. Well, the, all the interest here on moral standards in trap one. This dog won by Helen Roach from Castle Connell, trained by Tony Meek, bought for a huge sum during the derby here. Winner of the English derby, has yet to win in Shelburne Park, but has be, been drawn to perfection in this race. And while if he's to establish his reputation, he'll have to do it here. This son of Flagstar and No Way Jose. But in six, we have Velvet Rocket, the dog with the rocket early pace, who flies up. Looked a bit tired when winning his semi-final, but Tony Fahey told me before racing that the dog is in good order. He thinks he's ready to run a big race. It should be a smashing contest, Des. Yes, the consolation over the years has often produced even better times than the actual winning of the derby, but uh, the bell sounds for the consolation. One is Moral Standards, the 6-4 to four joint favourite. Two is Long Valley Manor, 10-1. to one. Three, I'm Dizzy, 12s. Four, Ballygrooby, 4-1. to one. Rocky is on 10-1. to one. And Velvet Rocket in six. Another one very smart to, out of traps is the 6-4 to four joint. And the top has just gone 5-4. to four, And Velvet Rocket bombs away. And Moral Standards has loads to do as they come off the first turn. With Ballygrooby in second. Long Valley Manor is third. And down the far side, Velvet Rocket's very good break. Leaves them a couple of lengths in front. Ballygrooby be a second, a couple of lengths to Long Valley Manor. They're clear of Rocky. Moral Standards is only one behind, and that's I'm Dizzy. But now up front, a real battle. Velvet Rocket from Bally Groby. They're running off the home turn. Velvet Rocket. Bally Groby closing strongly on the far side, but Velvet Rocket. Oh, it's close. Very close between Velvet Rocket and Bally Groby. Very close between them. Velvet Rocket just possibly in the last ride finding that little reserve that might have landed the consolation but this has gone to the judge yes one to the judge in a fine race there in velvet rocket the dog with that smashing turn of early pace probably an unlucky dog not to be in the derby final but stamina ran out in the semis cramped up i believe coming home but there he is out in front of bally Grooby. what a race she ran in second but watch moral standards there and going into the bend joint fourth or fifth runs right off the corner here and clips rocky there on the rear end and runs right off the track out wide the dog that's supposed to love the inside but put himself with an impossible task then down the back and he came up the home straight with some flourish but Meanwhile, out front, it's Velvet Rocket by a few lengths from Bally Grooby in second, a few lengths to Long Valley Manor in third, three lengths to Rocky, and there you see Moral Standards nosing into the picture ahead of I'm Dizzy. Around the last or third bend, it's still Velvet Rocket, but Bally Grooby challenging. She looked as if she might win at this stage, a strong staying bitch in third, Long Valley Manor putting in an effort, but Velvet Rocket still running strongly, maintaining the well, near middle of the track course there as he comes off the last bend. Swings wide off the last. Bally Grooby now relaunches our challenge again. Look back and you see Moral Standards beginning to run up the home straight, but it's way too late and coming to the line, no doubt about it. Velvet Rocket the winner. Bally Grooby second. And I think Moral Standards with that devastating late burst, if only he could produce it that little bit earlier, getting up there for third. Yes, well, <clears throat> we've had two great races for the Derby final and the consolation. Two very, very good greyhounds have won it in Joyful Tidings and Velvet Rocket. And quite amazingly, these two dogs started this year in the Lee Strand Charity 550 down in Tralee, where Velvet Rocket was favoured for the final after some stunning performances. Joyful Tidings came along, won the final. Velvet Rocket picked up an injury. Here they come along in September. Joyful Tidings wins the Derby. Velvet Rocket wins the consolation. Yes, that's form if you wanted that way. Velvet Rocket there having a terrific season. George Dewey is here with me now. He's one of the delegates from America, from Oregon, I believe, to this week's uh, Greyhound Conference. How did it go? It went very, very well. This is the uh, third time I've seen the big derby, so, uh, and it gets better every year. Now, the conference that you were attending over the past week, what came out of that? Well, generally it's a uh, conference where the number of uh, racing greyhound countries get together, so it's more of an exchange of ideas than uh, anything specific. 
Uh, Greyhound racing is like everything. It's kind of different and uh, to get together in this industry and learn what other people are doing, particularly the ones that are developing and giving them ideas is probably the biggest thing that came out of it. In America, um, is it pitched at the ordinary person, greyhound racing? Is it the ordinary man's sport? It's the ordinary man's sport. Uh, and unfortunately in America, with all the competition from video poker, uh, lotteries and so on, we're having some difficulty. Uh, my particular track is down about a half, for example. Uh, we used to have about 5,700 people uh, every seven, seven days a week, which is a pretty good attendance. But now it's down to about 2,500. And is racing still seven days a week in America? Uh, still the same, uh, probably a little bit too much racing, and uh, I think a lot of the tracks are moving down a little to a little less racing. Was there a feeling at all during the past week when you were discussing it with delegates that perhaps there's a saturation of races? I think there's a saturation not only of races, but there's a super saturation of gambling, and that's the big competition. Is it as big a gambling event in the States as it can be in this part of the world? Well, I think it's even a bigger one in this part of the world. It's when you look at handle and you look at attendance and the number of tracks and so on, uh, much bigger. Your impressions of tonight's final? It's a great one and uh, you, know, you hear the roar and uh, I've, as I said, I've been here at three different derbies over the year and uh, I think this was the finest, except I didn't win. <laughs> Thank you, D. George. A lot of people did win. They were mostly from Kerry. They were backing their own joyful tidings then. The Respond Derby Champion for 1994 and from uh, all of us here. Let's first of all take a look at uh, the ESPYs, the starting prices, before we go. And there you have it, joyful. For 1994, first joyful tidings at 5 to 2, second favourite. Second was Michael's Machine, 9 to 2. And third was Emmett Rocket, 10 to 1. And the time was 30 35. And the result of the consolation a win for Velvet Rocket at 6 to 4. Second was Bally Grooby, 4 to 1. And third, Moral Standards, the 5 to 4 favourite time, 30 59. Well, the derby itself was a terrific race. Well worth having a look at again. Joyful tidings, an outstanding victor from Shelburne Park. Good night. And away they go, and Old Maid missed it, and bombing away was Michael's machine. Air flyer right up. Joyful tidings in between them. Might just shade it, and Joyful tidings has hit the front. They're racing down to second bend, and racing down the far side. Joyful tidings, a couple of lengths clear. Michael's machine making ground as Emmett Robert, moving into third place, and racing now towards the home turn. Joyful tidings is out in front. In second place, Michael's machine, Emmett Robert trying hard, but Joyful tidings is going to win the Respond Derby. Joyful tidings wins it in good style from Michael's machine, Emmett Robert and uh, followed in by a disappointing favourite old maid, missed the break, what a night not to come out in front, but it was a great run to the first turn, and joyful tidings emerged from the first turn in front and stayed there to win the derby. Yes.